Um, all righty, let's get started. Welcome, everybody. This is the Kubert Community Meeting, and I know what day it is. It is the 17th of April, 2024. Hope you're having a lovely day. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you are new to the community meeting, um, if you want to drop a, a note in chat to say that, yes, I am new and I would like to introduce myself. Um, otherwise, uh, we'll continue on. Um, and so, yeah, I'll, I'll go through the, the schedule check-in and the upcoming CFP. And then if you'd yeah, like to just introduce yourself, just let us know in chat and we'll come back to you. All righty. Uh, so our schedule check-in. Um, today is the day of Kubernetes release version 1.30. Um, as of 15 minutes ago, I don't think it had been released, but um, there's also no reason that it, um, that's been blocked for any reason. So there's that, um, yeah, hooray. And there's nothing much here for us. Uh, we will have a, an alpha tag on the 1st of May. But I do like to point out that we've got our feature freeze on the 12th of June for a G on the 3rd of July. So always good to know those things. Upcoming CFPs. Alrighty. DevConf US 2024 closes in five days, uh, and that will be in mid-August. Um, there is two KubeCons, KubeCon China 24 and Kube, uh, KubeCon North America 24. Um, the China deadline is May the 5th, and it will be also in mid-August. June 9th for um, KubeCon North America, and it'll be in mid-November in Salt Lake City. Um, there's also Kubert Summit, but I will get to that in just a minute um, because I see that um, we have someone new here today. Would you like to um, say good day and who you are and, and why you're here? <laughs> You can unmute, there's an okay button in the middle top that you have to press first. The elusive double mute. Um, ben Wright, did you want to introduce yourself or? Yeah, oh, yes. problems. Okay, <laughs> I was uh, just uh... Putting it in the chat. Uh, yes, Benoît Gossin, I'm working at Orange on network services and uh, more specifically on network uh, attachment of uh, virtual network function. So we are using kubevirt and we are working on a virtual user network uh, binding plugin. Um, and as such, we, um, we sent a design proposal on the mailing list. Uh, and we wanted to discuss about that with you. Awesome. Welcome. By the way, did did I happen to meet you at KubeCon? Yes, Is we met. Uh, I think we met in KubeCon in Amsterdam last year, and we I saw you <laughs> this year also in Paris. But in, um, <laughs> we discussed uh, about the plugin with uh, Alice and uh, Fabian also uh, this year. Awesome. Um, well, welcome. And we will get to your, I can see your um, design proposal being added to the open floor. Uh, so we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, Qbert Summit 2024, the CFP closes in uh, on the 20th of May. Um, I'd, I'd love to hear from, from everyone. I'd like to hear from the people and on the developer side who like, what are you working on? What are you excited about? And from the um, end user point of view, what is your user journey? 
what is your implementation, um, especially if you've done anything that you know might be a little bit unusual. Um, it will be the 25th and the 26th of June. Uh, it will be an online uh, and free event. Uh, we're currently looking for an event platform because uh, anyone that was here last year knew that we ran into a slight problem on our first day owing to the virtual platform. Um, please tell your friends. I've included the links. Uh, where's my cursor? Uh, here to our website link, uh, our blog link, and our um, Twitter tweet link if, if you're in that kind of a thing. Um, yeah, so please share. Please help spread awareness for this. Um, yeah, are there any questions? Cool. Um, this was suggested by Alexander Wells probably last year, uh, at least a while ago, um, as a way of uh, deterring bots from entering. Um, we'll start using it because it is a bit of a pest. Uh, and that will be using a passcode to enter this meeting. So it will be the same passcode as what pretty much, I think, every single Kubernetes SIG and TAG meeting use, which is, I think it's six sevens, but maybe it's five sevens, or maybe it's seven sevens. Whatever it is, we'll start using that one. It'll be a copy paste. Um, I'll put something on the mailing list uh, for broader, um, uh, broader awareness. But it's something we'll start doing in approximately one month's time, just so that people have a good and due warning. We have some, um, I'd like to celebrate some merged design proposals. There's three that I noticed. Um, and I, it'd be cool if anyone who commented on them would be able to speak to them. Um, one is the Kubert BMC. Um, keep losing my cursor. This is pretty cool. This is uh, basically uh, like a, a redfish centric. Um, uh, let's bring it up. Mm -hmm. Implementation for bringing up Kubert clusters. Is everyone able to speak to this really quickly in 10 seconds? Man, this takes a long time to load. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. Like it says on the box, a Redfish or IPMI like uh, management for bare metal servers. I see a question regarding Qvert Summit. How can people propose talks for Qvert Summit? Uh, if you click on the um, link, why don't I click on the link? For instance, the website. It will take you, how do I submit a proposal? Please submit through this Google form. Hopefully the Google form works for you. Uh, it should. If it doesn't, uh, please let me know. Um, and if you're in a region that um, is non-Google form friendly, um, please contact me. I am aburden at redhat.com or on Slack. I'm on the CNCF or Kubernetes workspaces. Um, and we can figure out an alternative submission. Uh, cool, cool. Yeah. I've got a weird monitor configuration at the moment, so I keep losing my cursor. Moving right along. The next proposal, which will take about 20 seconds to load, um, I'm pretty sure it was Aliche's. I see Aliche in the meeting. Uh, would you like to quickly say something about this? Yeah, so this is basically... Um... A new field that we added to the VM stack uh, that represents uh, a volume of this strategy and it will be used for volume migration. So when you want to migrate your volumes to new ones. So um, more detail in the, in the proposal. Awesome. And there was another one which I, I think was merged today, um, a network binding plugin. Is there someone from the SIG network who was able to quickly speak to this?
No? Not even Rel? Sorry, I was not uh, involved with this proposal. Uh, okay. I forgive you. Um, well, it looks as though extending a network binding plugin entry into the qubits. Yeah, with an option for a downward API. It's a downward API from the vert pool launcher pod to the binding sidecar will be added. And it's adding device info. Moving right along. I just added something to the pull request that need attention, but we seem to have moved along from that. I'm sorry. No, uh, we'll get to it um, after we we talk about this um, next design proposal. Okay, thanks. You're very welcome. Uh, Alice and Benoit. Um, yeah, so there has been this discussion about the um, design proposal for uh, the host user. Um, I think the main uh, problems right now is how to expose uh, the host user socket uh, to the Orange CNI plugin. Uh, but I don't know if Benoit wants to introduce the, the proposal, yeah. explain the problems. Um, yes, in fact, we uh, already made the network binding plugin for the host user interface uh, because the solution need uh, to expose the VS user interface to the to the VM um, and to attach it to a DPDK user space data plane. Uh, so we create we developed a network binding plugin, but we I think we have uh, to discuss about how to share the socket. Uh, between uh, the VS launcher pod and KEMU and uh, and the data plane. Uh, today, in fact, we um, we um, we rely on the socket MTDIR uh, to store the sockets, uh, and then the CNI um, uh, need to uh, access uh, the MTDIR directory of the VS launcher pod in the kubelet uh, directory of the host and to bind mount it uh, to a directory available to the um, to the data plane uh, but we are we think it's not perhaps the cleaner way to do it and we discussed with uh, alice about uh, how to uh, to have a, a more clean way to uh, to expose the socket in the in the various directories uh, so I, I think alice uh, Proposal is about um, uh, um, give the ability, in fact, to the to the network binding plugin to um, to uh, to declare a, a target uh, directory where to uh, uh, store the sockets, uh, and then the CNI would uh, be able to access directly to the socket. Um, Perhaps at least you can <laughs> ex yeah, explain. Um, more in detail. Just one one question for you. Um, um, does need the um, DPDK uh, user client need to be privileged, or could be run also on privileged? Um, ideally, it would not require to be privileged uh, because if the data plane has access to the socket. Uh, yeah, if it has the right to access to the socket, um, it doesn't need to be a privileged container. Uh, but, but today, as we rely on the host pass uh, to access the socket, we need uh, the, pod, the, pod, the, the data plane pod to be privileged. But if we can... I'm asking you that... because uh, an alternative um, approach could be if you could inject um, the VOS user client into the VIRT launcher pod. It depends on the privilege that the application requires. But uh, if this is possible, that could simplify a little bit the things. Could you elaborate on that? I Yeah, sure. so right now you are just uh, injecting the sidecar works. Uh, in VIRT launcher. 
-hmm. So what I'm asking if um, um, your data plane could run inside the Earth Launcher pod as an additional container. Uh, no, because the data plane is common to um, okay. all the all the VM running on the just on the yeah. Node. It was just worth it to um, <laughs> to check because if it's um, a different process per VM, you could inject that container in the Earth Launcher pod and share the software. No. no, no, no. It's uh, yes, it's a, a common data plane. Um... Mm -hmm. I see. I see. <clears throat> Um, so for the others, basically what I um, I propose is we should decouple um, and introduce a new mechanism in Kuber to expose um, um, sockets that are created by QMU. So one detail for everyone, uh, so QMU is acting as the server. So um, the socket are created inside the Virt launcher file system. So I know it's not very nice, but the the only thing I can think about is that we let Virt and Labai mount uh, this directory containing the socket into an own location that uh, their CNI plugin can can then find. So, so the sockets are in the Vert launcher, right? Yes. Um, the, that, yeah, it's KMU that created the socket in the Vert launcher pod. And, uh, and at the end, data, the data plane opens the socket as a client. Mm -hmm. So they have to share the, <laughs> they have to have access to the same socket. So today, I, I there is a, some di diagram in the in the proposal where we explain what we did today. Regarding the sharing, it's so from uh, yes. In fact, the when yes, the virtual pod is created, so the first the CNI is called and uh, is creating the uh, yes the let's say the the secondary interfaces uh, with the uh, and uh, and it expects to have the socket in the well known directory so uh, we expect to have the the socket in the in this subdirectory and then the CNI just bound out to another directory of the of the Post file system that is accessible to the data plane pod. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering um, if we could get away with something like device plugins. I mean, but on the other way around. Um, yeah, Vladik, it's uh, if it was the the other way around, then yes. But so no, I mean, I imagine um, that we would have a. So so I mean, if we would just enumerate uh, the number of connections, this. Um, uh, viewers user can the data plane can uh, can accept then these could be represented as uh, um, as device plugins a and then th there would be some kind of a piece of code that is uh, once the device plugin is consumed um, it would connect to the to the socket in um, invert launcher I don't think it's possible because it's the other direction. So device plugin mm -hmm. expose um, files that are on the host inside the container. But I know, no, I'm just thinking that, yeah, yeah I, I understand. I'm just trying to, uh, to think if it's uh, possible to, uh... Your idea would be to uh, rely on device plugin mechanism to, uh... To yeah, I mean, if you have a device plugin uh, and the and the virt launcher is consuming it, uh, then you would have a um, you you would have an access to uh, from virt launcher to something, uh, but that something needs to connect to um, 
to your uh, to your data plane and uh, alich is right in saying that uh, this is the other way around i'm just thinking how can we if it's possible to uh, to change direction yeah we discussed this in qcon but it doesn't seem the case Yeah, in fact, I'm not sure how we can achieve uh, and how to manage, in fact, the the sockets uh, with a device plugin. Yeah, um, it would work if uh, your data plane would be the server and him the client, but that's not the case. It's not the yes, it's not the case because. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and to be honest, device I mean, plugins are not namespaced. The uh, the socket is exposed mm. to the entire node. So I, I don't know. It's it has some problems, the device plugin. I don't think we can we can use it in this case. Yeah, we so, spoken about it. this. Sorry. Uh okay. Uh we spoken about this like kind of, but like I mean, it would be possible if somehow, like, I understand that the thing is like the, the thing on the pod is the one that is creating the socket. And like, if that something would be able to do, like, for instance, what, so take into account what uh, the way we just consume like network interfaces uh, in Qvert, like originally QM created the socket, created the interfaces and all that. But we've asked QMU to like be able to just accept a an existing and configured um, tap device and Mac V tap device and like just roll with it. It's configured. Here you have it. Use it. Like we could probably ask for the same thing, but like here's the socket. Just use that one instead of go creating instead of creating a new one. Just you use it. But again, while saying this, I think your proposal is simpler. And I've said this already on the, um, mm -hmm. on the mailing list. Yeah, the problem is always these buy mounts that are uh, a bit problematic uh, when on cleanup. That's the main concern I have. Yeah, and what, what component will do the buy mount? I mean, for example, there will need to... Yeah, it's like less ideal. Yeah, no, no. in this case, it would be the device yeah. plugin. In this case, what would do the bind mounting between would be the device plugin. I'm not sure, Miguel, I, I get the, 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 the point. Uh, the device plugin are implemented by, by Viertenda. Yeah, but like what I'm saying is the device plugin would just create a socket. We just get the pod, the pod access to that socket, and the thing on QM or something that that requires that would just grab that socket and configure yeah, the DPDK thing using it. No, because that's like the it's QM that is creating that socket. You cannot just. That's what I'm saying. If we tell QM, if we ask the QM developers to change their code to provide the ability of it consuming an external socket. Like instead of creating the socket itself and doing what it needs to do, it would just grab an existing socket and do what it needs to do on the socket you give it. Yeah, that would be ideal. Uh, also, uh, Miguel, do you know if uh, it can consume a file descriptor? I do not know. But again, I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't be able to. But again, I do not know. <laughs> For the device plugin, I'm not familiar with device plugin how to implement it. But if the issue is about creating the socket and consuming the socket, perhaps we, we just need to bind mount the, the directory that hosts the socket and let uh, KMU create the socket inside the directory and and then it will be accessible I to do understand. I do understand. And again, let me rephrase. I mean, let me just put everything I said into context. I'm just making an exercise of thinking ways this could work. And if you want this to work with a device plugin, which is, I think is the way that is more Kubernetes uh, aligned and friendly and native, uh, 
uh, the thing that makes prevents us from using a device plugin is that QM just creates the socket. And I'm saying we could have QM consume an existing socket. You could ask their developers to implement that. It wouldn't, I don't know how much work it would be or if it's even possible. We could just ask them. This is an exercise. Again, if we go back to what you're trying to do, I agree. You just need to have like access. You just need a way to backfeed something that you're creating on the launcher pod to the to the plugin, to the CNI plugin. Yes, and, but like that's a different layer. And the the, the proposal that uh, you and Alicia are making, I mean, it. I mean, I think it works. It's simpler. And I guess it's cleaner. I just think that using a device plugin is more aligned to the Kubernetes reality. But again, like it has an issue, it has a couple of issues. Part of it is that it's impossible to do right now, and we'd need to ask something to for a to, from QMO people that we don't even know it's possible. Miguel, even passing a file descriptor from a, an external component. Uh... That is not part of Qbert is not so easy. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So I, I know that I'm a little bit late to the game. I, I do want to point out a potential area that this is going to be scrutinized is on the confidential uh, computing front. Um, this is going to raise questions about violations of the trust boundary um, because inherently the guest pod should not be trusting the hypervisor. Um, so I don't know if you're planning to maybe approach this as we need to have a flag that is provided to specify that this cannot be consumed as a confidential com compute pod, or if you're looking at approaching this as from the, you know, it, this is an optional buy-in, right? So just something to consider as well. Um, I didn't have confidential computing on the picture, but um, I guess confidential computing has enough restriction that we can also restrict it at this part. Um, if that's that's an issue. So let me just uh, say the background of the idea. So this would be working a little bit like CSI. So. What CSI does, you have your driver, it prepares the, um, the storage, and then it exposes um, the storage into a directory. And then Kubernetes basically uh, will mount this uh, directory into the pod. So this is a way to decouple CSI from, from Kubernetes. And here it's a little bit the same. Uh, so we want to decouple uh, a resource that Qbert or um, in this case QAMU has and make it available to other um, uh, component, uh, Kubernetes, in this case, CNI plugins. But it's a generic mechanism. So right now we are talking about the host user map, but um, the host user is not uh, only for network. We, we could use it also for uh, a VSOC, for example, we could use it for storage, we could use it for um, for um, GPUs. So yeah, I, I think having this mechanism could be could be helpful for maybe also other kind of um, other plugin. Maybe as a, a follow-up question, I know it's again not not quite in the scope of this, but I know that there is um, TDISP specification. It, it might be interesting to examine how these virtual drives might be able to um, emulate that to adhere to that compliance, and then we completely bypass that. Anyway, um, is there, again, I apologize, I'm a little bit late to the meeting. Is there a possibility I could get a link to, to this discussion? Yeah, it's on the note. Uh, in the community meetings, I pasted the, um, the discussion. There is like a uh, discussion on the mailing list. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you.
So, uh, Vladik, I hear you that uh, by mounts it's not nice. <laughs> I know, but I think the rest is more complicated. And I don't see how we could use um, some Kubernetes framework to, to, to achieve this. I mean, the, um... I would explore what we can do on the um, on the very uh, sorry on the QMU side first um, before we are committing to um, mount binds again. Um, take into account that there is also DPDK, so DPDK needs also to support the way how um, to co how to connect to QMU. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear you. There is always the ugly solution to have a proxy between the two, but uh, I don't think it is. But... It's something that we should do. Uh, by the way, with the, uh, with, the, with, the, um, with, the, with the reservations, um, did, we, uh, did we go with the mount binds as well? No. But it's uh, the other way around. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Well, let's continue. And <laughs> I don't have any good uh, ideas right now. So is the logical next step for this then to create a design proposal in the community repo, uh, so that we can continue the conversation in a more like granulated way than on the mailing list? Are we up to that? Don't we have that right now? It's only on the mailing list, but I think Benoit and Maxime yes. they plan to. Open we it, yeah. plan to open a formal pull request to the community repo, uh, but we have to get the uh, go from. Uh, <laughs> we have a process to follow, in fact, to, um, to participate in uh, in such a community. So we have the to wait to go. Uh, to be arrived in one two weeks. <laughs> so sorry, we have to. Uh, to, that's I think why we created the uh, is also fine. Yeah. So I will yeah, try exactly. to contact my team and ask about uh, the different options that the host user net has. I'm not network expert, so I will. Um, but I don't know. I I don't think there are many 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 other options apart from this uh, client socket. Is it possible right. to accomplish the same what what you're trying to do with um, Istio sir Istio? Uh, no, that's in fact that's why we implemented the um, uh, user space data plane uh -huh. like VP or VSDPDK is about to achieve uh, uh, good performances between uh, for the VNF. Uh, from the VNF to the to the external NIC, to the physical NIC, uh, so we don't do any uh, any process on the on the network flows. Um, so that's why, you, and it's basically uh, every kind of network flows. So no, we can do it with uh, with this tool. Okay. All right. Uh, if we're happy to leave that there, I think we'll. Uh, you guys are getting your authorization so that you can continue to uh, engage the community in the community repo and post this design proposal. And we can continue the conversation on the mailing list until then. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Um, yeah, I've got wicked lag, by the way. So hopefully, no one else is experiencing this with a whole lot of jumping around. Um, thank you very much for a stimulating conversation. Um, we've just got a couple of things more to get through. Um, Cifalik, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, you've got a couple of PRs that you'd like some attention on. Yeah, um, one of them, one of the PRs was, uh, I just made it, made it this morning and I still have to squash the commits and sign off on them. So I apologize for that. Um, basically, we have a number of um, configuration modifications that provide support for a um, an ultimate S390X build, but the um, the uh, processes 
that use these configuration files are actually executed on x86. Um, so I'm I'm lobbying to uh, be allowed to make PRs that are uh, germane to um, the ultimate S386, uh, excuse me, the uh, the S390X build, um, namely in this case for maintaining the R RPMs with Basel DNF um, ahead of the implementation of the CICD that runs on S390X. So uh, these are, um, so when Basel DNF runs to build these RPM lists, they're, um, they're actually executed uh, or can be executed on the um, x86 CICD system. So as a way of, um, instead of having one great big PR at the end that is the all singing, all dancing um, S390X implementation, um, what has been suggested to us by our leadership, in fact, is that we uh, split off the pieces of the um, uh, of 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 the changes that need to be made that that don't actually require this s three ninety x system to run them on, but and as a way of reducing the risk when we do make the PR that that does the runs on the s three ninety x systems. So, um, so what the the uh, third PR is the thirty ninety is just documenting how the uh, Basel DNF utilizes the uh, platform information, the architecture information that's provided in the configuration files, um, like uh, Basel, uh, dot Basel RC and um, RPM defs.sh and, and the other one, which is uh, repo.yaml that allows Basel, the Basel DNF phase to go and build its RPM lists. So um, I'm asking for, you know, permission to add something that's germane to S390X, the build, but before there's actually a CICD for S390X, given that um, if there is a problem with those configuration files, they'll show up here um, rather than uh, uh, waiting for the end and having a lot of different places where things can go wrong. Um, so listening to that, I don't hear any particular issues. Obviously, you have to look at the PRs, but Sounds reasonable to me. Yeah. I, I followed your um the the way you went about doing the uh, uh modifications to those files for ARM or the way Alexander Wells followed those um uh uh implemented the changes for uh ARM and uh just sort of did the same sort of thing with S390X. And the thing is, I actually did them a few weeks ago in our local repository, and I and we what we've been doing since is uh, building the CDI operator and testing it, and seems to work. We have a, a smoke test running, and um, and now we're using those builds to uh, put together the CI/CD. There's someone else working with me on the CICD part, um, but you know, I, I one suggestion that was made to us was, well, why don't you take this RPM maintenance bit and uh, and and get the PR in and get it all merged so that you so we have a number of smaller merges up, you know, preparing for the wonderful day that we have. Uh, system Z that's actually running the um, CICD system to test all of the operators. So, and I'm. 
Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll make some time to to uh, review the PR. I I appreciate it. I'm I'm writing a little, um, a note to the um, mailing list now, um, and we'll uh, tag you in it. And I tagged you in the um, uh, I tagged you in the um, uh, write up of the PR notes. So, thanks a lot. Yeah, no, no problem. I'm, I'm a little buried in, in some other stuff, so it, it might be a day or two before I, I get to it, but I, I will definitely make time for it. Thanks. It's yet another reason to get these things in early, you know, so that you're not, you don't have a huge PR to review at the end, but, you know, we sort of. Right. I, I appreciate that. Okay. Thanks a lot. No. Alexander, did you want me to CC you on those two? I'm pretty sure I'm going to CC it on. Oh, I see your name. Yep, right on. Cool. Thank you. And thanks for bringing that up. Thank you. Uh, on my cursor again. All right. I think we just have now the mailing list review. We already looked at that. We have one bug. So we'll get some eyes onto this. It might come under time. Fleet VM action response, but the API returns, not that. Um, okay, no one's looked at this. Program has been pinged. Um, hmm. Who is intrigued by this bug that I can uh, tag on this, help this person out? Um, yeah, tag me. Yeah. And I will. Thank you very much, Ladek. All right, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Uh, let me just run up to make sure that no one snuck anything on. Excellent. All right. Um, I'll leave a couple of seconds here in case anyone wants to jump in with a, a last minute uh, question or a moment of inspiration before we all depart. I'll take that as a no. Thank you everyone for joining us this week. Uh, thank you for that wonderful conversation. Um, yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you all here next week. Don't forget, Kubert Summit 2024. Thanks guys. See um, and actually, just real quick, um, Brian, I am looking at that node that's down. Um, are you available for just a little bit uh, offline to talk about that? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll give you a message on Slack. Thanks. <laughs>